Welcome to this month's Who Knew presentation, All That Jazz. Jazz Beginnings Jazz is a style of music created by African American musicians in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, originating in New Orleans. Sound of jazz is often improvisational, developed with syncopated rhythms and distortions of pitch and tones. Instruments particularly associated with jazz are saxophone, trumpet, trombone, drums, and piano. Occasionally, guitar and violin are included. A vocalist is often part of the jazz ensemble as well. Jazz styles evolved as times changed. In the 1900s through the 1930s, blues, ragtime, and Dixieland were popular. Swing came to be in the 1930s through 1950. Bebop, 1945 to 1955. Freeform, 1955 to 1985. And Contemporary, from 1975 to current. The Hill District of Pittsburgh was known as the crossroads of the world was home to immigrants from 25 countries and a center for African-American sports, journalism, theater, commerce, and jazz. Jazz artists from around the country performed with Pittsburgh's many musicians in the Hill jazz clubs, dance halls, theater halls from the 1920s through the 1960s. Jazz thrived in the Hill District. Some of the jazz greats who stopped to perform in Pittsburgh on their way to New York or Chicago were Ella Fitzgerald, Louis Armstrong, Dizzy Gillespie, Miles Davis, and Billy Eckstein, just to name a few. One of the Hill District's best known jazz spots was the Crawford Grill. Let's take a closer look at that now. The Crawford Grills. Crawford Grill No. 1, located in the Lower Hill, Hill District, on the corner of Widley Avenue and Townsend Street, opened in 1933 till 1951 when it closed. It was a three-story yellow brick building. The second floor had a glass-topped bar. The third floor was the VIP lounge and the owner's business office. Crawford Grill No. 2 is located in the Upper Hill District on the corner of Wiley and Elmore Streets. It opened in 1943 and closed in 2003. William Gus Greenlee was the owner for all the Crawford Grills. He was a businessman and a lender to African Americans in need when traditional institutions would turn them away. In 1950, there was a fire at Crawford Grill No. 1. Here is a picture of workers demolishing the roof in 1951. Gus Greenlee died in 1952. The ownership of the grills was turned over to his partner, Joseph Robinson, and later his son, William Buzzy Robinson. They ran the number two grill until it closed. The grills were known for good food, good music, and elegance that appeared to a mixed clientele. Two other grills were operated by the Robinsons, the Crawford Grill number three in Manchester, opening in 1948 till 1955, and the Crawford Grill in Station Square, Grill Number 4, opening in 2003 and closing in 2006. These pictures were many of the pictures taken in the Hill District by photographer Charles Teeny Harris. He was a photographer from 1938 to 1975 for the Pittsburgh Courier. Here's some pictures from inside the grill. Grill number two. 
Some of the other Hill District jazz venues are listed here. Collins Inn in 19... Some of the early jazz musicians in Pittsburgh that were well known were Fate Marbell, 1890 to 1947. Another early jazz musician in Pittsburgh was Louis Deppe. He was a baritone vocalist from Ohio and in the 1920s had the first African-American swing band in Pittsburgh. His band, the Serenaders, appeared regularly in the Hill District at the Paramount Inn. His recorded performances gave swing fans the first opportunity to hear good swing music. He met Earl Hines, an amazing pianist from Duquesne, and was so inspired, hired him for his band, $15 a week, including board. The two men, Hines and Depe, performed on KKA Radio in 1921, becoming the first African Americans to perform on radio. In 1927, Hines was the pianist for Louis Armstrong's band, at that time, Count Basie said Hines was the greatest piano player in the world. Hines gave saxophonist Charlie Parker his first big break in his own band in 1947. Over his musical career, he made over 100 recordings and even made appearances on Johnny Carson and The Mike Douglas Show. The end of jazz in the Hill District. As part of Pittsburgh's Renaissance project, the Urban Redevelopment Authority began to clear and renew the Lower Hill District. Every building was demolished, historic churches, profitable business, and beloved jazz venues. No effort was made to preserve anything. The Crawford Grill, number one, and jazz clubs on Fullerton Street and Wiley Avenue were just a memory. Fullerton Avenue became a parking lot. With the street connection to downtown cut off, great musical and social cultures of the Lower Hill District went into ruin, not renewal. Jazz may not be in the Hill District, but today it still thrives in Pittsburgh. If you would like to know more about jazz in Pittsburgh, here are a few. for watching. Join us for the next Who Knew presentation, American Red Cross, Tuesday, March 16th at 6 p.m.